Ravens here. Um, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of my game against had her here. Um, trying to zoom out, but I can't do it. So that's a bit temperamental. If you zoom out, it might move the boxes. But hopefully, if I refresh this other page, it might be okay. So here we go. I had a really good first turn in this game. What I did was I started off he had Marie Birdland and he had Margaret. So I decided that I would deploy six or up to six in Argentina and one extra, so four in Queen Maud, and then one in Iberia and one in Piranha to take them both up to four. So Obviously I decided to attack Marie Birdland first, and I lost one taking that, so I ended up with five troops out of my six, and by taking that it gave me the extra bonus for Antarctica. Um, the other thing I was thinking was, I deployed one in Iberia and one on Piranha, because as everyone knows, if you have four troops you can still roll all three attack dice, so... Um, by having four in each of those, it gave me two rolls to try and take his three in my grab. Um, so I got really lucky there. I didn't lose a troop attacking from Iberia, so I had four here. And that meant that I could use the path reinforcement to take my three troops from Eastern Europe the whole way down to Queen Maud to help in case I wanted to hold Antarctica. So he didn't really have a very good turn this turn. If we take a look over here at the record, <laughs> he put units on Sunbelts and Lawrence and the Sunbelts again. So, oh, he did. I take that back. So he took... He took the Caribbean for me. Which is okay, but I mean, I feel like he needed to take Antarctica to get rid of my one troop, or one extra troop bonus. So here we go, I'm going to start my next turn. Um, so, one thing that I try and do in 1v1 games is always try and take down the big stacks that they have, so that means they don't have as many troops to be able to run through my regions as far and get me down to the lowest troop bonus for every three regions. So... I have another pet peeve that I have. <laughs> I only ever attack more than one with even numbers if I can. That's because if you're attacking with, say, a 5v3 or a 7v3, if you lose two troops straight off the bat, then you go down to 3v3 and you have to stop rolling. Whereas if you're attacking a 6v3, one extra troop gives you a whole extra roll if you lose two, so then... Anyway, so this is looking okay. I'm probably going to lose this against Madagascar, but now I win it. There we go. So I took out his five, and now my reinforcement from Europe is going to be nice and safe. So now I've got to think. He's got a three in the outback and a three in Amazonas. So if he were to try and crack my bonus in Antarctica... He would have to go through this way 8 troops, 3 plus 3 plus 2, or this way 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end my assault, and I'm going to take this guy from Central Europe and put him over in Eastern Australia, so now I have to take 8 in both pathways. I mean, he could go through Africa, but there's a lot more there. Um, based on what he did though, I'm expecting him to try and take North America this turn. Um, if he does, then I feel like my probably 8 troop bonus, yeah he'll take Greenland, so I'll probably get 8 troops, I can probably crack it with 8. I mean I could go through Dakota and then Klondike, or Iceland, or even up through Amazonas and Colombia if he leaves Mexico week. So we'll see. Uh, 
Oh, I got very lucky. He iced out completely against Greenland. So this is a just, I guess, a very <laughs> lucky round. <laughs> so here we go. Um, I think it's over. He's oh no, he is going to take Mexico, but it's over. So I think I'd be able to zoom out a bit if I reloaded. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click the reload button. And then hopefully I can load the page at 90% zoom. And then the game should be okay. Here's another bug. So if, just in general, if you load the page and you're not 100% zoom, you'll get the army numbers will show up, but there won't be any color backing to show which player it is. So then you have to go back to 100% and then back to 90 again to get a good. So we'll see, hopefully it'll work. Okay, so while I'm just waiting for that, I'm going to pull out my trusty risk, risk page. This is somewhere in the forums, I've forgotten where. But this has everything. Shows you odds for how many numbers it's attacking against what and what. And the graphs up to 100% and all of that. It's actually pretty good stuff. Um, anyway, the one thing I was going to show you was this. This is just the basic results for every roll. So if you're attacking 3v2, you have a 37% chance that you're going to win twice. 29, that's 1 and 1, and 33. So in other words, you have more chance of winning if you're attacking 3v2, right? Here we go, this is what I mean, loaded numbers without backing, so if I just go back to 100% and then back to 90, then I'm good to go. So I showed you this page here saying that you have a better chance of winning if you're rolling 3v2 than losing, because if you're the one doing the rolling, then you have a better chance. So in this case I'm going to attack up and into North America. But what I'm talking about rolling 3v2 here is some people would just say, oh, okay, I've got 8 defending, I don't need to take the outback. But you should always roll, if you can, um, in most cases, any chance that you have to roll 3 dice against 2, basically. Um, so that worked out really well. Didn't lose the troop. And now I'm going to go up into North America. Uh, once again, I'm always going to roll 3v2s, or 3v1s even. Now I've got him down to 13, so I don't think I can take... I can probably take one more region, but I'm not going to roll a 2v1, because those odds are really bad. Um, so I'll just add my assaults, and... Hmm, this is a choice. He doesn't have cards. So I'm getting three troops, so it doesn't really matter what I do, really. I'm just going to put my biggest stack from Queen Maud the whole way up to Mexico. That should be good. He's given up in North America and he's trying to go into Australia. I mean, I already have eight sitting up here. So I could probably put some in Australia next turn and attack there. Oh, back to my turn. That's one thing I love, you saw over here the pop-up. If you're on Major Command and it comes up as your turn, then you get the turn notification. That's really cool. Okay, so here's one thing I'm going to do. Um, if you hold a region of importance or a command, I find that it's always best, if you assume that you're going to win, to attack down into it so you're not taking troops out. So here I'm going to put all my troops in Saka and I'm going to attack through Yamila down to try and take Indochina. Um, because if I attack the other way I'm taking troops out. I might have to reinforce Borneo so we can't take it through the East Indies. 
well that sort of thing. I mean in this case I probably could just deploy in Borneo and take the East Indies and then go up. But this is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm getting some good dice here. Here again, there's another example. I had seven there, so I attacked Japan. Just second nature to attack the ones with odd numbers and the twos with even numbers. Bit of a weird OCD thing for me. I only have mild OCD. OCD, okay, guys. Just kidding. Not really. Nah, I don't. Um, so now I have this stack of eight that I have here. Um, here we go. I got too impatient. So the game engine hadn't transferred one troop into the Caribbean. So I got this pop-up box again. So I clicked too early and then it transferred and then I got, I clicked too early, I got the pop-up box and then it transferred. So if I click one again it's going to go to five in Mexico and two in the Caribbean. So this is where playing in two tabs comes into handy. Just switch over to my other tab. It's okay, I lose that one. And Bob's your uncle. So I'll leave it at that and assault. And here's the cool thing. Once you're in your other tab, I'm just putting this here because I want to clean out the East Indies. Once you're in your other tab and it goes to a new turn, the dialog box goes away. So this is back to a perfectly usable tab again. So I know in this case it's had her playing from way behind, so it doesn't really matter. But in the general instance, you if you're going second, you want to take every advantage that you're given because the advantages of going first are huge, right? So right now, because I'm going first, it always means that I'm getting an extra card. So in the instance of Hadha, what I would be doing is waiting until I turn in my three set of reserves every single time. Because you get the two extra reserves every time. Um, in this case though, he's so far behind, I figure he just wants to turn in. So, he did. He's assaulting. And... That's it, my turn again. I might... One thing I like to do is sort of clean up the board a bit. So, I'm going to put four in the Balkans and four in Arabia. I'm going to bump Borneo up to six. And I'm going to put three in the British Isles. This is the only... I remember there are sh lots of shortcut keys for the game engine. I've forgotten what a lot of them are, but the one that I always use, the only one I really use actually, is the control button. So if you hold down control and then click somewhere, it'll deploy one trip. Um, so here we go, I've got four left. Once again, I want to crack this six because I want to get rid of his big stack so he can't run through me. So what I'm going to do is deploy here, but once again my OCD, I'm going to leave an even number there. And I'm going to put an even number here, up in Greenland. So let's see how I do clearing the board. Got the East Indies. Notice here how I'm attacking from Arabia first, so if I do ice out, see if I iced out in the Balkans, I'd leave my two ones open for attack. Whereas by icing out in Arabia first, it, I guess it, he, he can only take the one region rather than going through and getting access to my ones. So there we go, got some good dice. 
Um, once again, rolling three dice against two is better odds. So, I guess that didn't work, but I'm going to stick to my game plan here. Didn't work for either of them, but that's okay. And over here, I'll roll three against two. I mean, I've already won the game. I probably shouldn't say that. Murphy will come back and jinx me, but oh well. Then I'll just grab my biggest stack and pull it down here. Okay, so it looks like Adha is going to try and take America. I mean, it's good enough as any plan at the moment. I'm going to turn in there. So, right here, if anyone's brand new, we'll just go over cards. So, at the end of every turn, you get one card, right? So, I guess these are cards. That's what they are in the actual risk game. They come as cards. Um, and then once you get three of a kind you're allowed to turn them in for bonus reserves. So right here I've started my turn. Oh wait, no. Hadha's still ending his turn. Yep. So I stuffed up. I clicked the turn button too quickly, so it would have jumped to my next game on my game's homepage. But I'm just refreshing this page now. There we go. That's the trusty your turn in one game. So I love that pop up. It's so good. Okay, here we go. So once you have three of a kind, you can turn in to get your bonus reserves. I'm six in this case. Um, when you have just three cards and you manage to have three of a kind, then you have the option of turning in or not turning in, and the same for when you have four. But the most you can ever hold in your hand is five, so once you get to five, you've got to turn them in. Even if that's mid-turn, when you take someone out and you get their cards. If you have more than five, you've got to turn in mid-turn. Um, so, what am I going to do here? So I've got a set of green. So you can either have a set of... Oh, what am I talking green? A set of white, a set of brown, a set of red. I don't have any red cards. Or if you have one of each, that counts as a set as well. So, I had, see how Balkans is bold right now, if you didn't notice I had Piranha bold as well, it gave me a 2 troop extra bonus, so I only had 1 in Piranha, and now I turned in my set and I'm up to 3. So, I'm just going to put it all, I mean, once I have such a big stack I don't really worry about odd numbers. Although, I did lose a fair few, lost 7 to 6. Here we go, if the game engine will ever advance my troop. There we go. Notice once again, me being OCD and attacking with an even number. And now we can hope that my 10 gets through 8 of his regions. It's not going to happen. I'd have to win every single roll. There we go. This is an annoying bug nowadays. Sometimes games load without the troop boxes. Sometime this week. And maybe the game engine stalled. I'll refresh this. I shall just refresh both of them. Whatever. Now I'm just going to look at the honor and diplomacy scores here. So, um, this is my honor score. I'm a little bit annoyed. I've been playing too much real time. People get angry at me in real time for some reason. Um, so it's dropped from about 90 to 83, but that's okay. So this left number is your honor score, and the right number is how many people have voted. So 83% of 184 people. I'm not going to do that in my head but that many people said that I was honourable. So hopefully that's sort of an indication of if someone's fun to play with, basically, or if they're going to stand true to what they say. Um, oh, I've been blabbering on too much. Ran out of time.
And I iced out there. Okay, I'll just send this four up to the sun belt. Okay, so back to these scores. Um, yep, honor is basically how fun, that sort of thing. Now this diplomacy score, this is out of a thousand. And if you break an official treaty, that's going to drop by 70, I think. And then work its way back up. So this number to the right is how many treaties you've broken. Me, myself, I saw my number at 9.30 and thought, what on earth? And I went back through all my games and I couldn't find the one where I'd broken a treaty. So I was really disappointed that I have this one here. But um, after some number of days, I'm not sure what it is, your diplomacy score goes back up again. So it dropped to 930 and it's on its way back up. It's at 1000, so I'm fairly happy with that. One thing is, I was telling you this because in the personnel tab, um, your diplomacy score and your honor score are here as well. So, um, I'm looking at Hatter here, and I've played a fair bit with him in singles, and he's been a good guy to play with. But his diplomacy score, 830, and his honor score is 44. So that's telling me that he's doing things that people don't like in multiplayer games, particularly, because um, 1v1 is fairly good. I mean, see, he played out his turn there, whereas I have known people who have just left once they know they're going to lose. Um, so, anyway, this diplomacy score and honor score, um, this tells me that Hadha has broken some official treaties from the diplomacy tab. See, diplomatic agreement request. One of those. Um, he's broken a few to get down to 9.30. And I think because of that, um, his honor score is pretty low as well, 44. So what you want to do, you can't see it straight away. You have to be in-game to see these scores, or you have to go to their profile pages, like mine up here, to see them. But that's something you should look out for, with particularly who you're trying to make an agreement with, with, with diplomacy. I mean, if someone has a diplomacy score of about 200, I have seen people with 200 scores, <laughs> then you probably don't want to trust them with with agreements. And the honor score, if it's below 50, then I'd be worrying about playing multiplayer games with them. But Adha is a fairly good guy. I mean, he doesn't talk much, but... Obviously, I think this is his game style that's reflecting his honor score, rather than his actual uh, no talking that sort of thing because that gets a lot of dishonorable mentions as well so hopefully I can finish this up this turn and this will end my first um, map walkthrough um, Classic Evolved, it's a good one. I like it. It's... It, it, it's not quite my favourite, but it, it is definitely the, the original, and that makes it one of the best. So there we go. I love these victory slogans. Um, whoever it was, if it was Shepard or someone else, better. Someone else, I love these. The enemy has submitted to your will across seven continents. I've defeated Hadka, gained 16 points, it took me 7 turns and 30 minutes. Your win today will strike fear into your future opponents. Not many people read that, but I think it's just a really nice touch of Mag Charm. Okie dokie, beans out, I will see you guys for my next map.